Hi there, my name is Joe and welcome back to this episode of Getting to Know Your CML. What we're going to look at today is something a little bit more advanced, but something we get asked about quite a bit, and that is creating your own custom image. So this isn't just the image definition and this isn't the node definition. This is a custom image, something that will run within a node. And just as a brief refresher, if I come here to nodes and image definitions, so these are the nodes. You can think of these like the virtual device types. Um, and these are the images that those virtual device types run. And so a node can actually have multiple images, as you see here, multiple different versions uh, or instances of that image that it can run. And what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to create a custom version of the Ubuntu, uh, the latest Ubuntu image uh, that we can customize with our own packages or our own Python libraries. Uh, we can add user accounts, we can do custom integrations, whatever we want to do. We'll show you an easy way uh, to set that up. Um, this would technically work with any uh, node definition. Uh, you could do it with uh, something like iOS V or uh, CSR 1000V, but I like the um, Ubuntu because it's a nice Swiss Army knife. It's a, it's a fully featured open source uh, Linux distribution. Actually, let me go create a new lab here. Um, and it's something that uh, uh, it, it's nice to be able to install uh, different packages to be able to to achieve different use cases or do different tests. So the idea here is create an external connection first. I'll put it into uh, bridge mode on my VLAN 10. Um, the idea is we're going to take this uh, this base image. Uh, which is the latest, we'll do the 20, uh, February 24th, 2021, uh, 2004 image, and we're going to add some customizations. Uh, we'll, let's say, add the iPerf 3. Uh, we'll add uh, Ansible as a, a, a Python library in there. Um, and then what we'll be able to do then is save those changes so that every new version of our uh, Ubuntu node running this image has all of those packages preloaded. Now you can do that with the uh, cloud init config. You can, you can mess with this YAML here and get it so that uh, nodes are bootstrapped with all of those, but that can be kind of uh, cumbersome to figure out the indentation of YAML and figure out what are the uh, elements of cloud in it and how to do the app get and how to do all of that. It's nicer just to have the image ready to go uh, when it first boots up. So in order to get ready, we started with a lab here, but in order to get set up, we actually need to do it in cockpit. So we'll go over to the cockpit interface and we'll log in as sysadmin here. And we do need to be in the terminal. So we're, we're in the terminal and we're going to sudo to root. So I do this with the dash S option to give me a root shell. You can see I'm root. And then we're going to change directory to var lib libvert images viral base images. This is where all of those images live. So all not not the again, not the node definitions, but the images that the node definitions run. And the image we're interested in is this Ubuntu 2004 image. So step one is to copy, use the CP command with the dash A, so copies all of the attributes. We're going to copy this directory into a, a new directory. I'll just name it with my username at the end here. So I'll create this J Clark. This will be the, um, the custom image that we're going to start with, and then we're going to add our customizations. Now you could certainly do this without this step. You can just use the base image, but I like to leave the, the image that shipped with CML, I like to leave that intact. And it's important to note that you might notice over here that our cockpit says I'm, I'm using Ubuntu. This is CML 2.3. This process may work with uh, earlier versions of CML, may work with 2.2, uh, but uh, with 2.2 we use this overlay structure uh, on the file system to bring in the reference platforms and it was kind of uh, messy. With CML 2.3, we force you to copy all of the reference platforms locally to disk. So it's going to be a little bit more reliable. So I'm, I'm recommending that you do this with 2.3 and higher. Uh, your mileage may vary with uh, early releases. So I've created this directory. Next thing what I want to do is make sure the ownership is correct. So I'm going to change, because this is a user created one, I'm going to change the owner and group, so viral2 colon viral2, 
uh, the directory I just created. So I change ownership. Then I'm going to CD to that directory. And I don't have to do anything with this YAML file name, but just for consistency, I'll move or rename this uh, to match the directory name. So I'm going to change it to Jay Clark. And then I absolutely need to edit it and change some parameters. Now, I like to use the VI editor. It's not always very user friendly. So you can also use Nano as an editor, which is a little bit more user friendly. So let's do that. And the thing that I absolutely have to change in this file is this ID. This ID must be unique. So I'm going to name it something based on, again, the directory name. And I'm also going to change the label. Uh, the label is how it shows up uh, in the pull down in CML. So I want it to be obvious that I'm using my custom image. So I'll just call it Joe's version. I'll do the same thing with the description, though this is also optional. And then the last thing I want to do is change read only from true to false. I want to be able to make changes to this as I need. Then control X in nano will get me to the save prompt. I will save it back to the file name I created and we're good to go. So that's the, the first part of it. Now, in order for CML to read this, it won't automatically read this new uh, image definition. I'm going to do a system CTL uh, restart on viral2.target. This will not stop any running labs. That's a new feature to CML 2.3. I talked about that in my walkthrough video of the new CML 2.3 features. So if you have running labs, you can restart the CML services, um, and that's not going to affect them. You can do this, you can do some of this without going through cockpit uh, and, and get the, the base image and upload it again. It's just a lot of extra work and, and uploading and downloading. So even though you may not be that comfortable with, uh, with Linux or Unix commands, I, re I recommend you go through cockpit and just follow what I did here. Um, very little left to do in cockpit. So now we're all set up. We're ready to go. We can go back over to CML and you'll be, you'll have been logged out. Um, and as soon as you see the version number there, that means the controller is running and you can log back in. So here's that lab that I, I started with my uh, Ubuntu uh, node. Uh, I've already configured the XCon, but now what I want to do is click on this Ubuntu node, go to the simulate tab, and I want to choose, specifically choose the image I want to boot. And I'm going to choose the one we just created, the, the Joe's version. Now, right now, this is no different than that base version we copied it from, the base uh, Ubuntu 2004. What we're going to do is boot it up, get it into regular Linux user mode. We're going to install what we want on there, and then we're going to save those changes. So it's really user friendly. I don't have to worry about creating config files, cloud init, any of that. I'm going to just do it the way I would normally do it manually and then save that, and then I can just reuse it as many times as I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this lab. I'll pause the recording right now. You don't have to wait for Ubuntu to boot. And I'll come back once I've got everything uh, up and running. All right, so Ubuntu is booted. I've logged in as the Cisco user, uh, and now I wanna install some, some customization, some packages. So I'll sudo to root. And I'll run apt update to update the, the list of, of packages. Uh, so definitely need to be connected to the internet to do this. So that's why I have my XCon there, my external connectivity. So now that I'm updated, I'm going to install the, um, you can already see I've got 180 packages that can be upgraded. So I could create a fully updated with all the security packages and bug fixes. I could do that as well. I'm not going to spend that time, but I will an apt install iperf3. That's a nice testing tool. Um, get that installed. You know what? I'll also install MTR. Uh, MTR is another nice uh, uh, testing tool, but it's going to bring in all these other packages. So again, I'll pause and we'll come back when all of this is uh, installed as well. All right, so I got MTR installed on there. And I also mentioned I wanted to do um, install Ansible. So I would normally do that with pip um, in Python, but pip isn't installed yet either. So I'll do, and actually I'll prove real quick, no Ansible playbook. Command doesn't exist. So I can, um, I can install it with apt. So let me do that. I'll go ahead and just install it with apt. It's going to bring in a lot of 
dependencies as well. Hopefully this one's an older version of Ansible, but that's fine just for proof of concept. We can we can deal with an, an older version. If you want the latest, you would install a PIP3 and you can install Ansible uh, using PIP, but we'll, we'll do it the Ubuntu way. Now, if I run Ansible playbook, you can see it's on there. Okay, so, so now you can see before, not on there, now it's on there. So now that we've got everything where we want, and again, do whatever you want here. Make whatever customizations uh, you want. We're going to make them all persistent. We got Ubuntu where we want. The Joe's version image is good. Next thing I want to do is shut down this node. So I'm going to stop it, but do not wipe it. Not yet, at least. We just want to stop the node. Do not wipe it. Now head on back to cockpit. You should still be logged in, still in this uh, directory. This again is the base image. This doesn't have any of our customizations. This, in fact, if we look at the, the date, uh, February 28th, today is, what is April 13th. So it hasn't changed yet. What happened was uh, the KVM hypervisor, the QMU, created a, uh, a delta disk, a change disk. So it, it created a disk where all of the changes are written. Everything we just did there with with apt update, with apt install iperf and MTR and Ansible Playbook, all of that happened to a delta disk. And what we want to do is save those delta disk changes back into this base image so we could just reuse, we could create new instances of this base image. In order to find out where that is, we have to look at the lab ID. So the lab ID is up here in the URL bar and not on camera, so you can't see it, but it's a UUID. So I've just copied it. I'll bring it back over to cockpit. I'll just paste it in here real quick. So the lab ID comes from the URL. So the URL of my, my CML server for the lab, I'll just show you the whole thing here real quick, is that. So the lab ID, if you're looking at the lab, will always be this last component. This is different in CML23. It's now a UUID in CML23. Prior to this, it was a five hexadecimal um, ID number. Uh, so if you're trying to do this with 2.2, just note it won't be a UID, but it'll be the... Um, uh, or UUID, but it will be the uh, a shorter thing. So we want to take this UUID value and we want to change directory to var local viral2 images. And this is where all of the labs live, the, the running labs. And you can see this was migrated from an earlier version of CML. So I have some of the old IDs, but you do see I have a directory that is named this UUID. So this is the current lab. If I look in here, I only have the one node. Yes, I have an external connector, uh, but that's not really a virtual machine. So the only virtual machine I have is this one. So if I change directory to that, you could see a few files here. Um, they modified today, so that's a good sign. Um, the, the file we're interested in is this node disk underscore zero. If we use the file command on it, we'll see that this is a, a QMU QCAL2 image, and it's backed by that base image from our custom uh, image definition, from our custom image. This is the, the main, the, the, the actual meat of the image is this image, but all the changes that went in are stored in this, what is that, 594 meg of changes to this image are stored in this node disk zero. And again, what we want to do is, is kind of push the changes here back into this base image. To do that, there's a very simple command we run. We run qmu, k-e-m-q, sorry, q-e-m-u-dash-i-m-g with the commit subcommand. The commit subcommand will say, take all of those changes and save them back to the base image. And we run that against the node disk zero. Depending on how many changes you make, this can take a long time to run. If you haven't made a lot of changes, if it's a small file, usually comes back fairly quickly. In this case, we're always going to be looking for image committed. So it committed all of those changes back to this file. And if we look, if we do it now, if we do an ls minus l on the backing file, on the base file, you could see that, yep, it did change, just changed today uh, as of this time. So we've, we've pushed all our changes back in. And now we're done in cockpit. So now let, let, me, let me make a believer out of you. Let's go back to CML. Let's wipe this node. So let's let's send it back to default. So I'll wipe it. It's still going to boot Joe's version, but now Joe's version has all of those customizations. I'm going to start this up. 
again, I'll pause the recording while this boots so you're not bored watching Ubuntu boot. And then I'll show you, in fact, it did retain all of those customizations we did. All right, just to, to prove, I haven't logged in. It just finished booting. Um, in fact, I didn't change the host name. Changing the host name might have been something, but that's something that you, you might want to do uh, for, for individuals or individual instances. But uh, So I haven't logged in yet. I haven't done any customization. I just booted the uh, wiped node for, quote, unquote, the first time. So I'll log back in as that Cisco user that got provisioned. You can already see things are a little bit different. It already knows that there are a lot of packages that can be updated um, because it, we, we've previously run apt update. Uh, but now let me see. I want to do MTR. Actually, I think I need to be root here. But I'll do MTR out to 8888. And you can see that MTR is now a command. It's a, it's valid. But I didn't actually show you that MTR wasn't pre-installed, even though you did see me install it. So let's try something I did. Remember Ansible Playbook? Before, it wasn't a valid command. Now when I run it, it's a valid command because it retained all of those customizations that we did. So this is how you can, I think, fairly easily create your own custom images. And while we did this for Ubuntu, um, which I like as a, as a very customizable node type, this should work for any node. You just cumu uh, image commit your changes back to the base, and you can create those custom images without doing any um, downloading, re-uploading, having to do things on the side, having to do things in like ESXi and then convert them over. Um, this can be a very, I think, quick way to get those, those images customized. And now I can spin up as many instances of Ubuntu running the um, uh, Joe's version that I want, and all of those instances will get all of those customizations out of the box. I hope you have fun with uh, Cisco Modeling Labs, and I hope you have fun creating some of your own customized images. Thanks.